All right, so you wanna know something strange about me? A long time ago, when the internet was young, way back before I ever did this YouTube stuff, I used to be a member of a website called MFGG, short for Mario Fan Games Galaxy. And Mario Fan Games Galaxy was awesome. It was a community for Mario fans, a place for sprite artists, musicians, and programmers of all different kinds, each of us eager to learn things, have fun, act like idiots, and make stuff. And make stuff we did. For years and years, the site was filled to the brim with music, art, sprites, and fan games. And for those of you who don't know what a fan game is, well, it's a game made by a fan. Obviously. Jesus, man. There were fan games of all different kinds on MFGG. Bad fan games, good fan games, fan games that felt like actual Mario games, fan games that didn't feel anything like actual Mario games. Oh my. Luigi turned into Bomberman. What is my life? And God, there were so many more. I honestly don't even know where to begin with it all. MFGG had it all. From RPGs, to mini games, to 3D Mario games. Absolutely delightful fan-made content that you could spend hours and hours sifting through and messing around with. And nowadays, there are so many games on the site, it's impossible to even keep track of them all. Among some of the oldest fan games I remember, there was one called Yoshi vs. Windows, a game where Yoshi ventures into an old Microsoft computer and has to stop Bill Gates from taking over the world. <laughs> There was one called Super Mario Blue Twilight, a Halloween-themed game that was so popular, it actually got featured on G4's Attack of the Show once. So for more Mario fan games, there's a whole website for them, which I didn't even know. Wow. MFGG.net. It's Mario fan game something. Game. Game. Gallery. gallery. Yeah. Could be gallery. gallery. Right. Galaxy, not gallery, you morons! God, I still remember that day. I remember right after that show was featured on TV, we had a bandwidth problem and no one could get onto the site because so many people were coming in. Good times. Oh, and of course, there were also my fan games, which I'm not gonna be showing you because they're terrible. Because I joined that site when I was like 11 years old and I was terrible. But don't worry, because I am gonna be showing you something. I'm gonna be showing you something awesome, something far better than my fan games or any other fan games for that matter. Today, I'm gonna be showing you Psycho Waluigi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Psycho Waluigi, to put it bluntly, is basically one of the best Mario fan games ever made. It's notable for being one of the most functional, one of the most original, polished, and well-known of MFGG's vast fan-made library. It's also notable for being made by Thunder Dragon, who is actually the man who created MFGG. Thunder Dragon's made quite a few standout fan games, and like I've said before, I actually used to know the guy. I wasn't, like, good friends with him or anything, but I had talked to him a couple times in the past, and I've been playing his game since the very beginning. Thunder Dragon was known for making some of the oldest fan games to ever show up on the internet, such as Bowser Blast, Wario's Revenge, and Mario Quest. It's fucking hideous, isn't it? I can't even look at it anymore. How on earth did I spend so many hours of my childhood playing this crap? Holy shit! What is my life? So anyway, in Psycho Waluigi, you play as, who else, Waluigi, who at the beginning of the game is just flying around in his very own Waluigi hot air balloon. And he's also harassing innocent birds, because he's Waluigi. <laughs> So after being knocked out of the sky and falling unconscious, Waluigi wakes up hours later, and to his surprise, he finds a mysterious purple talking eyeball floating over his head. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Psycho Iris. I'm speaking directly into your mind through the wonderful magic of psychokinesis. Oh, by the way, that's Ashley's theme from WarioWare playing in the background. We used to do that all the time in fan games. Just use crappy mitified music from other Nintendo games that already exist. It was good enough. So the floating purple eyeball introduces itself as a being called Psycho Iris and tells Waluigi he's currently wound up in a world called Unconscia. So how would you like to use these psychic powers to, oh, I don't know, take over the world of Unconscia? Oh yeah. And so, yeah, that's the story right there. Waluigi agrees, and then he and Psycho Iris set off on an epic journey to conquer the world. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now, gameplay-wise, Psycho Waluigi controls like any old Mario game. You jump around, you platform, you kill enemies, and you find secrets. Except in this game, there are quite a few awesome twists. For one thing, as you explore the game's levels, you have Psycho Iris floating around you at all times. And you can actually use Psycho Iris to pick up objects, telekinetically throw things, and even grab enemies and use their powers while holding them in the air. <laughs> Also, there's this other cool feature called the eye flies. Eye flies are these little eyeball creatures summoned by eggplants that fly around you and give you special abilities. When you have an eye fly floating over your head, you can do things like double jump or fall slowly when you leap through the air. And like I said, it all functions perfectly. <laughs> So once you've beaten the first level and figured out how to play the game, you'll next be presented with a lovely handmade overworld map, free to pick whichever level you want. And every level is amazing. Each world you come across is totally creative and unusual, with new backgrounds, new enemies, and new awesome visuals everywhere you go. Like, oh I don't know, how about a crystallized swamp, with crystal trees and crystally underground water caves? <laughs> Or how about a kingdom of soap sud, with soapy soap bubbles soaping through the air? Or how about this place? Whatever the hell this place is. It's like a trippy alien acid trip forest with trippy alien acid trip trees. Hot damn. Oh, and apart from having all these great level themes, the game also has great level design in general. Every level in Psycho Waluigi is fun, long, and expansive, full of secrets and usually littered with multiple paths, twists, and turns. The idea of the game is sort of just run around and loot treasure. So there are tons of coins, crystals, and gems hidden in every corner of the levels. There's a lot to find and a lot to explore. But the best thing, the best thing is always the end of the level. In most Mario games to beat a level, you usually touch a flagpole, or you reach a goal, or you defeat a boss and save the kingdom. But in Psycho Waluigi to beat a level, you reach a throne, kill the king sitting on the throne, and then you take the throne, conquer the kingdom, and giggle. <laughs> best game ever indefinitely. Oh, and speaking of all the coins you run around picking up, unlike most Mario games, the coins in Psycho Waluigi are actually useful and worth grabbing. From the world map, you can access a shop called the Black Market Bonanza, run by a monkey in a top hat named Monkey Bags. <laughs> And there you can buy all sorts of power-ups, items, and tools that'll help you along the journey. And trust me, you'll want to buy them. Because this game is hard. It's insanely hard. Especially when you get to the crazy difficult boss battles. God, I just love it. I love it to death. All of it. From the gameplay, to the levels, to the graphics, to the bosses, Psycho Waluigi is just the best. It's a fan game you need to play, and it's a testament to how great MFGG really is, how great it used to be, and how great it remains to this day. I mean, god, just the fact that it's made by Thunder Dragon. Thunder Dragon, MFGG's founder. He made this game. I mean, how is that guy still even around? How is he still making games after all these years? You know, I went back to MFGG. I went back there recently and tried to find all the old people I used to know. And a lot of them are gone. Most of the old MFGGers have either moved, looked into new things, or just completely vanished from the internet. But Thunder Dragon, he's still there. He's still going on and making games like nothing's changed. It's just fucking crazy. But hey, I guess I can kind of relate to that in a way. Now I'm doing Jordan underneath. And, well, has anything really changed for me? I mean, back on MFGG when I was a kid, I was committed to making things fueled by video games and nostalgia. And now, here I am on YouTube, still making things fueled by video games and nostalgia. Maybe I'll be a kid forever. And maybe Thunder Dragon will too. So, what happens next? What are we to do? Am I to die? Am I to become one with the earth? Am I to fall off a cliff and drown in the sea? Well, I don't really know. But in the end, there's only one thing. One thing I can think to say. Jesus, Nintendo, give Thunder Dragon a job! What is my life?